My name is Matt, my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a third year CS and math econ major at UCLA, and I'm also part of Teach LA's dev team. I do a lot of training for them too. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about Firebase, Firestore, and how we can use it in our app. Throughout this entire tutorial series, we're gonna talk about how you can use Firestore to make your app persistent. But in this specific video, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about Firebase versus Firestore and what all these words mean, and then we'll walk through setting up Firebase for our sample project together. So first, Firebase is a set of products offered by Google. And if you head to their website, for example, um, you can see that they have a ton of different things that they do. So they help you build your app, release it, uh, do analytics, all these different kinds of things. Today, we're gonna be using one of the things that Firebase provides, which is called Cloud Firestore. And Cloud Firestore in particular uh, is a database schema. So it kind of helps you figure out how to organize and store and get all of your data without really having to worry about the nitty gritty. So why would you use Firestore in your hackathon project? Uh, this is much longer in the notes, but long story short, there's two reasons. One, Firebase and Firestore do all the server administration stuff for you, so you don't have to like write server code or manage a server. This is great for hackathons. And two, uh, Firestore tries to abstract away some very complicated parts of database management into super easy and simple to use functions. And we'll see throughout this video series that Firestore is gonna make our life a lot easier. Okay, cool. So that's exactly what Firebase and Firestore is all about. A little bit about what we're gonna do in this entire video series. So in the notes, which are linked somewhere below here, um, I've made a sample to-do list app that only works uh, on your client. So here you can say, you know, I want to finish editing this video. Uh, oh, that's a nice little video. And you kind of get this to-do list. You can strike it through, you can delete it. And then there are these like done all and, and uh, delete all buttons. Right now, this app is written in vanilla JavaScript, so no React, no anything. And if you refresh the page, like if I say Arjun is cool, and I refresh the page, everything is gone. And our goal by the end of this video series is to take this uh, starter code and make it work completely with Firestore so that you can have multiple copies of it open so it works with your friends, all that kind of stuff. So please download this because you're gonna need it. It's in the GitHub repository in the notes for this workshop. Cool, okay. so. Last but not least, as I said, let's actually set up Firestore first. And for you to proceed, you do have to have a Google account because Firebase is a Google product. Um, Firebase and Firestore are also like mostly free. Uh, they have a usage cap, but for hackathon projects, you usually never hit that cap. So I've already logged in with my Google account, um, but if you head back to the Firebase page right here, you can hit get started and it'll take you to this console. We're gonna add a project and we can name it whatever we want. Um, in this case, I'm just going to call this, I don't know, Queer Hacks 21 Fire Store, for example. Uh, we don't need Google Analytics, so we can turn this off, but you know, feel free to use it if you want to. This is going to take a bit of time to set up, um, so we'll cut back when it's done. Yeah, okay, we're back. Uh, so we can hit continue here. Once you have your Firebase project set up, we need to do two extra pieces of setup. So the first is we're going to uh, add it to our app. And this is a bit confusing. An app is different from a project because what you can actually do with Firebase is hook up a mobile app and a web app to the same project. We're gonna use a web app. So you saw I clicked that web button. We can just call this, I don't know, web to-do list or something. And again, you can kind of you know figure these out. We don't need Firebase hosting, so we're not gonna set it up. This next step is the most important and only code step of this entire workshop. So it's gonna say, hey, you gotta copy paste these things. And you know what? I think we should listen to them. So um, I'm gonna open up in VS Code, the starter code we have here, and I'm gonna head to index.html. So, you know, uh, this is like the HTML file that has our entire app. And right uh, before app.js, but at, under everything else, I'm just gonna paste this code here. Uh, this code does two things. So first, this line is loading the Firebase library itself, the core Firebase library. And then this script tag, what it says is, hey, these are kind of some configuration objects for your specific Firebase project. You might quickly ask, uh, if I'm gonna commit this to Git, aren't I committing like a Git secret? And the answer is no. So it's fine to commit these kinds of things to public repositories. In fact, your client has to have this information, um, but you have security rules. If you don't know what that means, don't stress about it. We'll figure it out later too. So once you're done, you can just hit continue to console. You've kind of done almost all of your due diligence. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head to Cloud Firestore on the left over here. And we're going to create a Cloud Firestore database. And as I mentioned, this is kind of the database scheme that we're gonna use. In my case, I'm gonna start in test mode. And a test mode is pretty useful when you're first starting your project. 
but I would recommend that you should take a look at these security rules um, once you kind of are a bit more familiar with Firestorm. The next thing it's going to ask you is, hey Matt, uh, we need to put this server somewhere. Uh, you can pick whatever server makes the most sense for you, but I'm in California, I'm in LA, so I'm going to pick something that's US West. And I'll quickly point out that a lot of your hackathon judges are going to be on the West Coast too. And whichever uh, location you pick, all that's going to do is just change how much time it takes to get to that database. So I'm going to hit enable. It's going to take a bit of time. The other thing I'm just going to quickly mention is we actually need to do one more piece of setup after this too, which is once we've added Cloud Firestore to our project, we also do have to add the library, which is different from the Firebase core library to our project. So I've added this in the notes already. I'm just going to copy paste this uh, into our script tag. I'm going to replace this to do because this to do is done. I'm going to put this thing in. And if you notice here, we're loading Firebase Firestore.js. And uh, if you're not sure where to find this script button, um, I believe if you, uh, oh, sorry. If you head to uh, the link that was in like the to do comment before, it'll tell you where to find that link. Okay, so now we've set up Firestore and we've put it inside of our project. Obviously we haven't really done anything with it yet, um, but this is all you need to do to set things up. So hopefully this was super, super simple. In the next video, we're gonna start creating our own data. I'll talk a little bit about how data is organized in Firestore, and then we're gonna make our first to-do uh, digitally and then read it, which is super exciting. Um, but yeah, and if you're not sure what to do, all of the tutorials, including this one, have written checkpoints inside the notes. So please check that out if you're not sure what your code should look like. But I am gonna mention that you shouldn't copy paste these values. You should copy paste the values for your project. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you sticking with me and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.